wonderful to do that. You know, for example, I like Bruno Dumont, and I know his way of filmmaking is much, much more, you know, more, more confirmed with himself. You have to really understand his vision, you know? uh, otherwise useless. Uh, whether you should, but in my case, it's very, very much uh, adapting, adapting to the reality. But also, people I work with so low, they, they, they never went to school. You know, like there's some runners. You know, I have ten runners, but you know, they, they grew up in the village, never left the village. You know, very, never educated. You got to really respect their way because then they will never do the way I would do. So you better know them than you know, than control the the, the whole thing. On va peut-être faire une pause pendant quelques minutes, juste le temps de respirer un peu et on recommence dans 10 minutes à, à 11h05. Oui, can we bring coffee here? Oui. Is it against the rule? Uh, <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's have a short coffee and we come back yeah, in 10 minutes à, 10 heures, à 11h05, à <laughs> midi 5 pardon, et puis on arrêtera à 11h05. Mm -hmm. We'll just start with the the first clip of uh, Once Upon a Time, 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 yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, Telugu, maybe you want, because I think it's also interesting to uh, explain how you work, especially with these two or four last film, because you mm -hmm. make at the same time, she made at the same time a fiction feature film and a documentary one mm -hmm. in, the, in a parallel way. Yeah. So maybe it's interesting uh, mm -hmm. to explain how do you have this idea and how it works in a concrete way to, yeah. to do two films in the, in the same time. So for the last uh, several years I, I work in this way. I prepare a fiction film and uh, so it was a very long time to prepare a fiction film. At the same time I'll be freely shooting a documentary film um, in the same location which I prepare the fiction. And uh, so I have done this with uh, my previous fiction called Shi Chinese. At the same time, I made a kind of sister f documentary film called Once Upon Time Proletarian. And it's, it's done in the same location, around the same location. Um, I think it, in, this is one case. And then last, last year, I did the same thing with UFO in her eyes which was more preparation, two, three months, in the location, building the set. So at the same time, I was working on this uh, proof of cubic love, um, which is a fiction, actually. But most of the footage are documentary footage. So I think I, I, do, I do in this way not because I have enough time or energy. It's more, I think it's quite dangerous to let the production process step on you over or, or killing you uh, slowly because you, you, when, when you have ideas it excites you and it can grow as well but it can die as well you can deny yourself easily to think this idea actually is, is not strong or perhaps superficial so you can deny yourself totally after the time goes especially when you be young you're not very mature with your vision yet so I, I do that when I do fiction, I do a side project, a documentary or small fiction, in order to keep my thinking or my energy like go healthy. Otherwise, you know, you sit there, you wait, and you, you go quite uh, uh, not constructive anymore. But that's, I guess, my way of filmmaking. I mean, some other filmmaker would find disturbing, mm. you know, if, if they work on one big project, and then at the same time they're shooting another one, they will find it very disturbing. But perhaps I will be like that too, maybe after 10 years. <coughs> but at the moment, I, I like this parallel the, the creation of dialogue. So then provo provoke me to think, especially when you're not making enough film yet, meaning when you don't have enough experience yet. I think it's good to, to keep filming until you find your method, because you will never find your way of filming if you don't do it, if you sit there not doing it. Serge Boson. A French uh, film director was here uh, two weeks ago. Said that the good rate for filmmaking was seven films a year. <laughs> what would be the your rate? That's not possible. I think seven films a year. But I think, uh, I mean, even one good film a year is very pushy, very pushy. And uh, and I think, uh, well, with me, I guess I guess slower and slower. So, but let's see. I I, I guess content <coughs> is really not important. Just do good things first. Um, so maybe we switch to the light. Just beginning of the documentary, which I made two years ago. 
And once upon a time, proletarians kind of about China's change in the last 20 years with a new social class, like new middle class, entrepreneur, millionaire, those kind of a new class which didn't exist in Chinese society, you know, for the last 50 years. Now it's all coming out. Okay. <laughs>
立秋以后下午上雨，下了地上雪，教教主今年雨雨水节，麦子愣他妈不住。你说这不是他妈少队的村吗？啊？倒霉的村这叫。跟你们也不能说，你过是过来人，不是过来人。我要说这，我我他妈仨村，这村人就是野。这主要叫穷，穷，什么他妈的拉点脚。做点临时工，这哎，打点短工，挣钱刮家产，攒点钱，盖盖得了房。那过去刚一解放那会儿，怎么打一资本家来着？跟那一样啊。那谁，他们这有一个大大队的。还有他妈嫖娼的呢，那现在还捐着呢，嫖娼这个，你瞅瞅，肉、菜、点心，热着呢。我看啊，就我们上跟跟那这屋睡睡下觉啊。有啊，隔着的，安全的。So it's been like twelve chapters of different social class. So he's the number one. Uh, uh, the first man we introduced, but through this black and white children tale. So in the beginning, you see this child in the, in the street. We found them really accidentally, and they were reading twelve little political fairy tale stories to support the film going through different characters. Yeah. Peut-être est-ce que vous avez des questions parce que ce serait intéressant de créer une dynamique et un échange avec des questions de votre part. I guess because the do docu documentary way of filmmaking, it gives, I think, it, we are being offered by the subject. So in a way, you don't possess the subject. They give to you. They, they, they actually possess you. And I think th that's a relationship. I mean, this sounds a bit abstract, but I think in my film, it's really the, these strong characters grab me. Or the, or the landscape grab my camera. But for example, I mean, I have a question, and it's also because in this class, uh, lots of people are working on the documentary at the mm. moment. I mean, can you do a documentary on a weak person, on a weak uh, sure. subject? I think sure. You can do anything in any time, in any period of time. Sure, it depends on your subject. No, no, no. You mean weak, weak subject? Weak, weak, uh, weak means perfect. not strong right. subject. Not strong subject. Oh, weak. Mm. Ah. Uh, Yes, yes, you can. But the thing, for me, it's like how do you measure, you know, a subject strong or weak? It's really about you as a filmmaker because people intend to say this is a very weak story because the, this, it's a girl, doesn't have his story, doesn't have hard background, and there's no gun, no sex, no whatever. So it's kind of too subtle, too weak. But I think. You can you can dig so deep with with a very uh, uh, less uh, physical subject. You can very very deep. So in a way, I think it's it's you, how you perceive it, and how you deliver this story with elements which which can be so strong. You know, uh, is your eye and your understanding, and actually your imposition as well. You impose your understanding. And this kind of filmmaking often being criticized. Uh, for example.